Hey guys, it's Jeff back from Golden Horseshoe Media Distribution and great to see you again. We're gonna do something a little bit different today. We're not actually going to do an unboxing, uh, but I wanna talk briefly about a question that comes up a lot. So when I tell people what I do, and I say that I actually sell DVDs and Blu-rays, the question I hear almost every time is, people still buy those? Or maybe the more appropriate way to say that is, people still actually buy those in a more curled up nose, condescending sort of way. Um, and in fact, the answer is yes, people do. Now let's be honest here. DVDs, Blu-rays are not the mainstream media that they were just a few years back. Uh, the streaming services like Netflix, Crave, um, Disney Plus, uh, on and on and on, have definitely taken over. But there still is a place for DVDs and Blu-rays, much like there is a, there is a place for LPs in the music realm. Uh, LPs have never totally gone away, and in fact, in the past year or two, they've actually become more popular than they were in the past. Well, why is that? And for a lot of those reasons, uh, DVDs will, in my opinion, uh, stick around. So I've compiled a list of the reasons why I think people still actually buy DVDs and Blu-rays. Uh, I won't call it the definitive list. I won't call it an exhaustive list. It's just my observations as to why people's people may still want to own DVDs. So number one, let's start off with the sense of ownership. When, uh, when you buy into a streaming service like a Netflix, you don't actually buy ownership of the movies. Netflix still decides what's on and what's off that service, and then you have access to what they decide. Uh, when you purchase a DVD or a Blu-ray, you've actually taken ownership of that movie, or at least that copy of that movie. Uh, so it's yours, it's yours to choose uh, as to when you wanna watch it, whenever that is. Uh, on a streaming service, well, in fact, they don't carry every movie, and they will drop movies from time to time if they're not uh, up to the level that they want with regards to watches and popularity. So uh, if you're looking for something specific, you may be out of luck. Uh, so that's the first thing, it's that sense of ownership, the sense of tangibility, something you can touch and feel and look at and, and really sense that it is mine. Uh, the next one is the artwork, and I actually brought a couple Blu-rays here with me to illustrate what I mean when I say the artwork. So they don't just write a title on the front and they say, stick a title and there we go, but a lot of these DVDs and Blu-rays actually, they put a lot of work into uh, the messaging, the illustrations that go onto the cover. So here's an example. This is an old movie called The Space Children, right? And you can see the, the beautiful artwork underneath that really gives that sense of, of space and, and exploration. Or The Forbidden Planet. Again, it's beautiful artwork. Uh, there's movie posters with the same picture on it. Uh, and quite often people buy it because of the artwork. They like uh, the pictures that they see. Here's another one, Evil Eye. Right? It really gives a sense, an image of what we're talking about, what we're looking at. So sometimes we'll, people will actually buy a DVD or Blu-ray just specifically so they can have the beautiful artwork that goes with it. Uh, the next one is the special features. Now when you're on a Netflix, you're gonna get the movie, but that's about it. What you're not gonna get is deleted scenes. So let me give an example of a movie in which a deleted scene was probably more important or more interesting than the actual um, scenes that made it to the movie itself. Uh, in the movie Yesterday, if you're not familiar with that movie, it's a movie basically about what if something happened and uh, the Beatles catalog of music went disappeared, everybody forgot about it, except this one guy. And this one guy goes about trying to reintroduce the entire world to the catalog of incredible music by the Beatles. Well, there's a beautiful scene that never made it to the final cut. And the reason it didn't make it to the final cut is because uh, one of the characters in that scene ultimately didn't score well with test audiences. So they, they re-edited the movie to take her out of the movie completely, which meant that this one scene got deleted, which is really quite unfortunate because it actually is 
uh, a beautiful scene. It's quite uh, funny, quite poignant. And, uh, um, but in this particular scene, um, the gentleman who is trying to reintroduce all the Beatles music is asked to write something on the spot. Well, for those who know your Beatles music, the Beatles actually wrote a song called Something. So when he's asked to write something, he actually writes something. Uh, so it really is kind of funny and the woman that he sings it to instantly falls in love with him on the spot. Unfortunately, as I said, her character ultimately got edited out of the movie because she did not score well with test audiences. Um, make of that what you will. But um, so if you want to see a great deleted scene, you're not going to see that on Netflix. Or how about bloopers? How often have you said, oh, the bloopers were the best part, right? Well, a lot of Netflix don't show bloopers unless it's maybe Marvel Comics where you might get a, uh, an extra scene after the credits. Uh, but a lot of DVDs do carry blooper scenes or um, interviews. Uh, there's a great DVD, uh, one of my personal favorites, favorite movies called Duel. It's a Steven Spielberg uh, early movie before he was famous. Uh, and in the extras, in the special features, is an interview with an older Steven Spielberg talking about doing uh, and directing the movie Duel and what he had to go through. And it was, for how great the movie was, the interview with Spielberg was almost as interesting. Uh, so you're not gonna get all those extra special features, deleted scenes, bloopers, interviews, uh, and any other type of special features that may come along. Uh, how about special versions? The prime example I can give you with that one is Star Wars. Uh, George Lucas, the running joke is, you know, wait five minutes and he'll change it. Well, um, he's since sold it to Disney, so that's not gonna happen anymore but there are many, many different versions or variations of the various movies. Uh, in fact, um, because of that, if you have the original Star Wars movies on VHS tape, they are actually still quite valuable. Uh, but, um, uh, but if you're looking for a particular version of a movie, then you may be out of luck if you're stuck with Netflix. I actually have one customer uh, recently inquire about a copy of the movie Brazil, uh, which I was selling, and he wanted to know if it was the version that was, and he gave me a very specific length of time that the movie was. And he said, that movie, that version has the scene in it that he wants. And sure enough, I had it, um, but he was looking for a very specific version. So, um, so that may be a reason. Uh, how about language? Quite often when people ask about DVDs, they don't think about the fact that not all these streaming services are available in different languages. I have a lot of customers in Quebec that order English movies with French, French subtitles or French dubbing. Uh, and unless they have a streaming service that offers the same features, their only option is to go to DVDs that have uh, language options or closed captioning options. Um, those are uh, also uh, something that may not necessarily be available uh, for all streaming services. So, in summary, I'm going to say, well, yeah, you're going to have your Netflix, and I love Netflix. I've, I've watched it before, and I will watch it again, and, and I will binge watch TV shows on Netflix or Crave or whatever. Um, but I also believe that there's a place for DVDs and Blu-rays. Um, and your reason may be one of the ones I've listed, maybe something different. Uh, if you have other reasons, uh, list it below. Let me know uh, why you like to collect DVDs and Blu-rays uh, uh, versus watching on Netflix. Um, there is room for both, and uh, it's, it's great to have people with various reasons and interests and angles on the whole topic. Uh, this is, there is no wrong answer here. So anyway, here's a, that was a few thoughts on, on DVD and Blu-ray ownership, and I hope you found my list um, interesting and insightful. Uh, take care, stay well, stay out of trouble, uh, social distance, and we will see you soon.